Who's allowed to fly model planes and helicopters in America? Well, the answer used to be anyone, but not anymore. We're going to take a look at the legal argument that the FAA has used that could be extended even to Frisbees. And we've got an InfoWars exclusive look at a Freedom of Information document that shows who was using Predator drones and Reapers domestically in America in 2014 while the FAA was cracking down on model planes. Last November, the FAA asserted its authority to prohibit anything, quote, invented, used, or designed to navigate or fly in the air, unquote. And it's busy regulating unmanned aerial vehicles under 55 pounds into extinction. There's a story that closely parallels what's going on at street level, where the government puts cameras everywhere to watch everything the public does, but prohibits us from even filming government buildings, and where cops arrest people who film them in public. You see, the government must see everything, but we should be blind. They need to know everything, but we should not be informed about anything that they're doing. It's just been announced that this giant tethered blimp will monitor an area the size of Texas. And we're told that it's for cruise missiles that may be shot at us. But then they say it's for downward looking views. And we see a FOIA request reveals that, quote, the technology was specifically designed to integrate a very high definition video to track and identify people and vehicles in a three mile radius, unquote. But of course, we're being paranoid if we suggest that this technology will be used for what it was designed for. And while the government's paranoid surveillance knows no bounds, the public, of course, should have no cameras in the air. And any irresponsible use of a drone by an individual is used by the government as well as the media to call for a blanket prohibition of citizens having drones shutting down competition to the media companies, as well as shutting down a technology that could be used as a check on government abuse of power. When the FAA first asserted rules for model planes last November, it was only just four. And now we see just a few months later, the FAA has already expanded it to 33 detailed rules. That's the way bureaucracy metastasizes like a cancer. And it's the way big business keeps out startup competition. We've already seen how it works. Raphael Perker was hired to do a promotional aerial video for the University of Virginia. The FAA said that he operated without a license and he had flown recklessly close to buildings, cars, and pedestrians. They fined him $10,000. He pointed out that it was a five-pound styrofoam model airplane and he hadn't hit anyone or anything and he'd caused no damage and no injury. But the FAA wasn't going to be stopped that easily. They argued that their ancient statute defined aircraft as, quote, anything invented, used, or designed to navigate or fly in the air. The judge at the National Transportation Safety Board, the NTSB, said there was no enforceable FAA rule that he violated. And he added that the FAA was trying to exert authority over anything that moved through the air, including even, quote, a paper airplane or a toy balsa wood glider. The judge threw out the fine and slapped down the FAA's power grab. So government bureaucrats said that other government bureaucrats could regulate even paper airplanes, even Frisbees if they want. And after months of legal battles, he finally agreed to pay a reduced fine of $1,100 and the FAA got what it really wanted, a precedent. And now they're off to see how quickly they can shut down the public treating a five-pound styrofoam drone as if it was a predator drone, treating a drone flown in downtown Manhattan the same as they would a drone flown over a private ranch in rural Texas. But let's forget about these little toy drones. What about real drones, serious surveillance and attack drones? They're already in the hands of Homeland Security and many federal bureaucracies for use in the United States domestically. This FOIA request given to InfoWars shows that there were just under 700 FAA licenses for UAVs to be used in the U.S. And virtually all those licenses are in the hands of the military, law enforcement, environmental surveillance and mapping, and of course, universities. In other words, the military industrial complex. They'll be monitoring your activity from the air with agricultural spying, with police spying, with tax authority spying, with the EPA spying on you, just to name a few. The BLM is even being given Department of Defense surplus drones that originally cost $250,000 so they can map out resources. Because those might be of interest to the corporate patrons of senators like Harry Reid. They can look for violations of new environmental rules and then steal the land from private landowners using excessive regulatory fines. And of course, the BLM doesn't need a certificate of authorization from the FAA to fly. 
it operates under a memorandum of understanding. So these BLM drones don't need no stinking license from the FAA. And so that's in addition to 11 drones being used by the USDA and the Department of Interior in this FOIA request. But we can see from this FOIA request there are a huge number of military drones that are permitted for domestic use. Perhaps they're solely for training, perhaps not. Homeland Security has 10 Predator B drones. The Department of Defense calls them MQ-9 Reapers, and the manufacturer describes them as hunter killers. Customs and Border Patrol, which operates under Homeland Security, has another six hunter killer Reaper drones. So this one document shows that DHS has 16 hunter killer drones for domestic use. Why? And it's not cheap for Homeland to fly their Reaper drones. $8,000 per hour, according to the House Intelligence Committee. So they spy on you and send you the bill, but you better not fly your five pound styrofoam plane because you just might get pictures of what our government is doing. For InfoWars Nightly News, I'm David Knight.